our, our end users and our, and our direct customers are kind of living in the world that IT organizations are setting out um, for, their, for their companies to, to get into. And uh, a, a lot of our conversations over the last several years have focused around these three themes. Um, my goal kind of out of this session is to one, get some head nods that your organizations are, are going through these same journeys. Uh, two, provide some context to, to show you that you're not alone. Um, and then three, talk uh, just real briefly about how we can help. So the first is the uh, acknowledgement that we're all living in a multi-platform slash hybrid, whatever you want to call it, uh, data world, right? You know, 15, 20 years ago, most of the conversations we had with IT shops, they would, they would tell us that we've got a singular data platform that we store all of our data in, right? You could have been an Oracle shop, a DB2 shop, whatever you were, you, you likely had a standard right, data technology that you made sure that all of your applications and use cases fit into, right? That doesn't happen anymore, right? Every once in a while, we'll still run into those single platform shops, but it's incredibly rare. There's a lot of reasons behind that. We'll go into some of the reasons, but, but most organizations we go into these days, they've got lots of different database platforms. They've got some data on-prem, some data in the cloud, and their admin team kind of has to make that work, right? How do we manage these disconnected systems and, that could be located wherever they are? As a uh, sub-component of that is the second bullet there around open source, right? And, and I, I incorrectly stated a few years back when I would give this presentation that open source technologies are new and disruptive in the database world, right? And, and they're not. Open source is not new. Uh, open source databases are not new. They've been around for, for dozens of years. What is relatively new, though, is enterprise IT shops trusting business-critical applications on open source technologies. Right? You wouldn't have gone into the you know, Fortune 100s of the world 10 years ago and seen mission-critical applications running on Postgres or MySQL, where, where now you are. So that's introduced some challenges about, yes, the software license is free when you, when you use an open source technology, but, but, uh, but that doesn't mean that the system's any less critical and how do we manage that. All right. um, and then the third bullet there is DevOps, data ops, whatever you want to call it. The impact to our customers are relatively the same. Um, you know, DevOps has, has, I think, unfortunately become very buzzwordy, and for good reason, right? There's a lot of benefit that it provides organizations around, you know, getting functionality and value into customers' hands as quickly as possible. Um, but the, the best definition that I've come across with DevOps is, there's a gentleman out of Microsoft named Donovan Brown. He's their Microsoft evangelist, or at least he was. I don't know if he still is evangelist for DevOps, and he defines DevOps as, he has this Venn diagram, and, and he says people, processes, and products, all right? And the middle is what's required to be successful at DevOps. Um, and so, so the people, you know, most organizations, some are going to a organizational structure to embody DevOps, right? They're, they're hiring and orchestrating their teams in a way uh, to adopt those principles. But a lot of our customers today are trying to enable their existing staff in the seats that they sit in to be successful with DevOps. And so we like to talk about kind of the, the technologies and the products and the processes that we can enable to help those existing people be successful. So these are kind of the industry trends that we're seeing. Most of the conversations we're having with customers, and this was validated during a lot of our conversations that I, that I had yesterday, uh, if, for those of you that came by the Quest booth, uh, a lot of them kind of centered around these three uh, objectives. Now, I often throw these three things up, and again, I, I'm hoping to get head nods and confirmation that these are things that your organizations are striving towards, or at least uh, implementing today. And very often, I get customers say, well, what about security and compliance, right? And, and so, of course, that's a critical thing. I mean, none of this can happen at the expense of security and compliance. Right, we're, we're all, most of us are gonna be in verticals, you know, whether you're retail or financial or federal government or uh, insurance or healthcare, whatever it is, right? We all have critical compliance objectives that have to be met. So that's a significant challenge. It's not a new challenge, but it's a, I guess, increasingly challenging challenge. Uh, that's probably not the best way to say it, but um, that, that we cannot adopt any of these um, at the expense of.